So multiple sclerosis is a really weird disease. It's confusing to the person with MS, and oftentimes friends and families don't get it. My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the top 10 reasons that your family doesn't understand MS, and obviously what we can do to help rectify that. Don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm not suggesting that your friends and family aren't awesome or they don't care about you, because I'm sure they do. I am suggesting that there are many reasons why it's super confusing for them to understand what you're going through. In this video, I'm going to share with you the top 10 reasons that friends and family struggle to understand your multiple sclerosis, and knowledge is power. And so by talking through them, I hope that we can help them decode so they can be better and more supportive village members. Let's jump in. For starters, MS is not that common. Here in the Midwest, the incidence of multiple sclerosis is roughly one person out of 350. And what that means is, it's very possible that your friends and family might not know anyone else with MS. And obviously, that makes it harder for them to understand what you're going through. Number two, multiple sclerosis is a lifelong chronic condition without a cure. And many people who are not medically savvy may not be familiar with a condition like that. Oftentimes, my patients will hear a loved one say, so are you better yet? Hey, is it over? And that can leave the person with MS feeling defensive or feeling like they have to console their loved one or feeling like they need to educate them as opposed to receiving their support, which is a very frustrating way to feel. Number three, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune condition, meaning that your immune system that's supposed to fight off bad guys is attacking part of you. Most people who are not medically savvy are not terribly familiar with autoimmune conditions, and so that can leave your friends and family a bit befuddled. Number four, the cause of MS is super complex and hard to explain. A given person has a genetic predisposition towards autoimmunity, and then there are environmental risk factors which may further increase that person's risk. Then that person comes in contact with a virus. We think it's mononucleosis, EBV, the kissing flu. And their immune system makes an arsenal to fight off EBV, which by accident identifies part of their body as a foreign invader. Now that's downright complicated and confusing. And as you can imagine, your friends and family might not get it. Number five, multiple sclerosis is the interface between your immune system and your nervous system which frankly are the two most complicated systems in the human body. Many people are familiar with the heart and the cardiovascular system that pumps blood. Many people are familiar with your lungs or with your stomach, but they're less familiar with how the brain and spinal cord are set up. And they're way less familiar with how the immune system fights off bad guys. So here you have a condition where the immune system and the nervous system are interfacing and things are going haywire. And so even the underlining biology of what's going on is not something that many friends and family understand. Real quick before we go on, if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you. Number six, multiple sclerosis relapses occur at random. Someone can have an MS relapse and then they may go months or even years before they have another one. To add insult to injury, someone may fully recover from the relapse very quickly, or they may not recover at all, or they may recover partially, and it's different for each relapse. Pretty darn confusing. Number seven, multiple sclerosis affects anything within the brain, the supercomputer that runs the body, and the spinal cord, the superhighway, that takes all the information from the brain down to the body and back up. Where the MS attacks occur is random anywhere in the central nervous system. And so two people that both have MS can have completely different experiences. In fact, twins who are identical copies of one another who have MS have completely different experiences. So if your loved one or friend knows two people with MS, they will witness two completely different disease courses, which is obviously confusing if you're not savvy. Number eight, 
The vast majority of MS symptoms are invisible to the outside observer. The most common symptoms in MS are what I call the up there's. Difficulties with thinking and memory, difficulties with energy, and difficulties with mood. And all of those take people out of the workforce and destroy the quality of your life, and you can't see it from the outside looking in. In our culture, if you say, I am really tired, the person you're talking to will say, yeah, me too. They have no idea how to conceptualize the degree of fatigue someone with MS may experience. Other common symptoms include the down there's, bowel, bladder, and bedroom. And those are invisible symptoms as well. Pain is very common in MS, and if your arm feels like it's on fire, it looks normal. And so that's very confusing to your friends and family. They can't see it. Number nine, MS symptoms fluctuate. In the given course of a day, you can have fluctuations in your baseline symptoms. When you wake up in the morning, you have all the energy and all the cognitive energy that you're going to have for the whole day. And you may start the day off really easily able to engage and be very articulate in your conversations. And as the day goes on, it may become harder and harder for you to interact. You may start the day walking beautifully, and as the day proceeds, you start to drag your leg. That's really confusing to people that are interacting with you throughout the day. Also, if there's a trigger, you can have what's called a pseudo-exacerbation. So when you catch the flu or when you have a urinary tract infection, many of your old symptoms may come back out. And then when that infection goes away, those symptoms go away. Again, leaving your friends and family not clear on why you're having changes in your symptoms. Very few other conditions change like that. And number 10, the medicines used to treat MS are really weird and not common. The way that we treat multiple sclerosis is by manipulating or suppressing your immune system so it doesn't attack your brain and spinal cord. We do that by, for example, killing B cells or blocking T cells or changing the behavior of the cells or rebooting the immune system. And that's not a common way of treating someone. These are therapies that you oftentimes have to take forever and the casual observer isn't familiar with treating folks in that manner. They may ask, hey, are you done with your therapy? Or, ooh, is it working yet? And that can leave people not clear on why or how you're being treated for your MS. I created this YouTube channel to help educate, empower, and energize people impacted by MS. So that means people with multiple sclerosis, but it also means their village. It's my hope that this video can help your friends and family better understand what you're going through, and as a result, be better and more active Village members. As always, thank you for learning about MS with me. If you'd like to up your game and learn more, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.